So, hello everyone. Finally, a new video. There aren't that many at the moment. Reasons, uh, I think, you know. It's my dad. Um, he's better now, but uh, he's still not uh, his old self after the operation and so on. So he needs a couple of weeks now to recuperate and he's going to be sent to a place that uh, helps him doing that. Um, but until then we have still a lot to do. <laughs> so there isn't that much time at the moment. But hopefully very soon uh, in the near future I'm going to have a couple of days off and I hope that I'll be able to do a few more things. Uh, just before I actually start with uh, what I wanted to talk in this video, I just want to point out again on the channel, just for you to know, that uh, I keep updating my playlists and my channel here, um, trying to inform you of new things that I discovered and uh, putting them in new or old playlists. So just want to point out to that again, uh, if you're looking for things, um, check out because there's a good chance that I have seen it on the internet and I have started now to add um, good videos that I like. For example, here um, in the tools of the trade section, there's the better pushback plugin described by John Fly, a channel that I watch uh, regularly. And uh, there's other tools and I'm trying to uh, come up with a mix of German and English. Um, if I find good videos in English, I usually leave them at that because there's no point in me doing a similar video in English. What I might do is because German language is not that well represented on YouTube when it comes to this hobby, um, I might actually do uh, that particular one in English, uh, in German. Um, but it depends very much on what's available, what's my mood of the day, you know, because uh, I was asked now recently, uh, not only by one guy, uh, how I decide basically what the language is. So yeah, it's a bit of an out of the moment decision as well. Uh, a bit like what I feel like when I want to start a video, but also it depends a little bit on what have I found so far, which doesn't mean that there are good videos in German about something, but it is hard to find them. And uh, that's actually a new, um, the, the new playlists, what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of uh, collect things now. Um, I've moved some of my videos from the online flying section, for example, to the basics. The basics uh, is a playlist where I will find and collect uh, good information. For example, there's a, from Flight Some Guy, there's a half assed guy to IFR approaches. I kind of found it funny and it's a video that can be watched. Uh, it, show, it shows a little bit how you use charts. Um, and I also found this channel here, Garak Durak, just recently, and uh, the video isn't isn't that new, but uh, the idea that he is portraying here, uh, Karten Kostenfrei, is actually something in German about uh, what we are going to see right now. And because I thought it is such a good information, um, and it's still valid, it still works, I've, I've actually discovered it some time ago, but I hardly ever used it. Um, I put this in here and I will find other good uh, videos in German and in English. And again, I might like in this example today, his German video now triggered me to do this video I'm showing you today in English. So just so that you understand a little bit more how it kind of uh, works out what language I'm doing it in. I, by the way, I want to fly a little bit more with the TFD I-717 when I have a bit more time. So I'm going to collect videos about it. Uh, there's one from Flight Some Guy, but uh, there's going to be more videos in this playlist also from me. And there's going to be new ones because I would, would like to explore that airplane a little bit more. I also am still working on this uh, online flying um, the playlist. Uh, I'm kind of checking some links have actually been removed uh, or made private videos so uh, you can't be seen anymore so I'm cleaning up at the moment some of them are really old so I, I start watching them and see if, if there's some what still relevant uh, if not then I might actually delete them but this is more a collection of, of videos about online flying it's a mix of German and English um, so yeah I try to, to keep 
keep uh, finding things for you and I put them at the beginning of the playlist so the uh, this is the kind of playlist where I put things at the beginning when they are new so that you can see them e more easily now but let's go to why I'm actually doing this video Euro control now if you're someone like me who has actually a Navigraph subscription or if you're in the US um, charts in the US uh, instrument charts for example also the, the um, visual charts the VFR charts they are actually free in the US um, you can go and, and get yourself uh, instrument charts and it's absolutely no problem uh, we're not talking Jeppesen here okay so we're not talking charts from a company because they do cost money and uh, I would assume that they offer some additional services which makes it uh, makes it a good reason why you want to pay for it but for us simmers uh, in the US you have no problem getting the chart material and if you remember skyvector.com if you go on the skyvector page you actually get uh, basically the visual charts the VFR charts uh, original um, as they are published uh, I think by the FAA or, or something like that and uh, yeah in Europe yeah in Europe it is not so easy to get free charts especially on the VFR sector I mean we do have good tools like Sky Vector that offer us something like a visual chart on the browser um, and I have showed you that before so it is possible to get material or charts or maps um, but when it comes to instrument charts is not that easy to get free stuff and free stuff that is actually up to date now this here this is a European uh, site it is run by the European Union I, I, the, the AIS I, I'm not actually sure what the organization is called that runs this but it is a, a common service it's called Eurocontrol uh, they are the guys that actually control the airspace in, in Europe uh, when you when you're not uh, directly connected to one of the country's uh, uh, services and uh, they also publish information they collect information from the various member states of the European Union but not only as we will see and you can actually register with these guys for free you do have to register but it is for free it doesn't cost money there are some rules that you need to obey and that means whatever they give you in charts or other information you're not supposed to make money of it you're not supposed to upload it on servers to do your own things with it unless you have the written consent of Eurocontrol for example the Watson Germany team they have as far as I know their charts come from here um, because they have a, a page on the Watson Germany uh, web page there is a section where you can download charts for Germany for German airports and I think they do have the written consent that uh, that they can use it but um, just be aware of it and uh, when you look here it's actually a very basic registration form you set yourself a username that you use to log on later um, you provide your full first and last name uh, you can write none for organization because you're not an organization but you have to put something in here and you pick the country from where you come from for example Germany for me okay uh, you have to provide a phone number but I don't think anybody is going to ring you so um, just put one in here and uh, you can decide whether you want to have simple mode or advanced mode what's the difference the difference is that in the advanced mode you will need Java installed and you will need to have Java running in your browser um, but it is a little bit more elaborate in the advanced mode you can do probably more things quite frankly just to find a quick chart I think that the simple mode is more than enough um, and I'm not sure if you can switch it later I think you can I think it is possible to switch later um, but uh, yeah I, I use simple mode uh, from the start I have used simple mode uh, I can confirm that I have read and accepted the AD usage conditions and uh, actually I'm not sure now if I use simple mode because when I registered a long time ago I think I might have selected advanced mode um, could be yeah I'm, 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 I'm not sure but there is a, a, a simple HTML interface that, that points you to your charts it's more like a page and, cl and link click thing 
whereas the Java offers you some some selections, some possibilities. And then you have to provide an email and here you have to actually give an email that uh, that can reach you. And that's it. You just register. Uh, there's no cost involved. There's no nobody is going to visit you or something like that. You just have to make sure that you obey by the rules. Uh, so read the conditions, please. OK, have a look here. And uh, it's not that much. Just make sure that you're legal, the legal notes, uh, that you're the disclaimers and so on. You have read and make sure that you obey by the basic rules. And by the way, they are, I think, vamping up this service. So it could be that um, you might see things change in the near future. So basically, when you have logged on, then you can see I am logged in now. Um, there's some stuff you can click, but actually the most interesting part is click on application. And what's going to happen is that you, you, you'll be brought here. Okay. Um, and what I actually need, all this stuff, you can browse through this, but this is not interesting for us at the moment. This is this here. All right. Now, I am not 100% sure if this, I don't think this is the Java because uh, when I look at the, at the page properties, this is probably HTML. So I'm pretty sure that even way back, I selected the HTML version. So this is a standard HTML form. Basically, what you do is you select the country. And as you can see, there's mainly European countries, but not only Philippines. <laughs> For some reason, they seem to have uh, according some some kind of cooperation with the Philippines. So you do get charts from the Philippines here. I'm not sure how comprehensive that is, but um, interesting. And there are some countries um, that I wouldn't uh, consider to be directly um, Europe. Okay. But they are basically in the east, on the east of, of Europe, there are countries that are uh, bordering probably towards uh, at, at, at the borders of the European Union uh, or even slightly a little bit further like Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan isn't quite around the corner and I'm not sure that you could consider Azerbaijan Europe, Europe as such, but they do have cooperation with uh, Eurocontrol and that means uh, you can get charts from Azerbaijan. And basically what you can do is either you, you just select country, but then you get a lot of stuff, not only charts. It is probably a little bit easier if you select the charts, you make click and then here you go. So these are the direct uh, instrument approach. So you click here and you get the instrument approach uh, into Baku, I think, or which one is that? No, Heda Aliyev. Yeah, I think that is Baku. If I remember correctly. Um, and the thing is, these are relatively, relatively recent charts. Um, they are actually the recent charts. They, they, they are the ones that the uh, Civil uh, Aviation or, uh, Administration or Authority or whatever they are called in the respective country have issued. Okay. So this is, for example, the latest chart um, for this approach here. Ah, Baku. It is Baku. Yeah. And uh, there you go. You have a chart from Baku. OK, um, they do actually differ uh, widely depending on where they come from. So, for example, if I go to Croatia and I select charts from Croatia and then I go for the um, look for the, uh, the sits and stars, there's IAC is instruments approach. So if you click here, so this is what the chart, for example, looks in Croatia far more detailed and actually two page. Yeah. Again, it's from March, 2017. Chances are they haven't changed since then. It's not that they change every month, you know, because things don't change in, uh, uh, in this case, it's Dubrovnik. Um, and uh, yeah, here's your instrument approach uh, into Dubrovnik. And this is the published chart by the Croatian uh, uh, Aviation Authority. So it's a great source to get uh, recent charts, current charts, and uh, yeah, Dubrovnik. So it's an airport that is uh, 
Yeah, it has certain challenges depending on the direction. I think uh, this approach from this end might actually be a little bit more difficult. And there are mountains here around, as you can see here, you know, the the MSAs and uh, and the altitudes. Uh, um, they are quite quite high, so you need to be careful. I think the airport itself is also, um, yeah, it's in 519 feet, so it's not at the sea or low. It is actually 500 feet above the sea. Um, and there you go. You have, uh, let's see, runway 112. So let's let's open this chart. And uh, here you can see now the approach, the instrument approach coming from the other end, which is actually quite a complicated one because you need to fly down here. Then you have to do some kind of an arc. It's an 11 DME arc uh, around the Dubrovnik uh, uh, VOR, which is here. Um, and then you have to kind of intercept with the localizer. And uh, actually, this is a VOR approach, not a localizer. And then you have to fly down a radial 316 with certain points here okay this is one of the more interesting approaches and then here's your your missed approach point which is for example if for some reason you cannot continue um, you're not actually in runway see this is the runway here this is the approach you need to actually veer off heading 274 you're flying up here and then you can try and, and uh, come again if if it's feasible with the weather. Otherwise, if your decision is to continue, you need to actually turn to heading 340 from 316 um, and kind of take the last dip down here. Okay. So this um, and and then kind of, I'm not sure if, if you even have to be visual. I think you, you, yeah, sector not to be used for visual maneuvering. Okay. But I think you probably have to be visual with the runway um, at the missed approach point. Um, so this is not, if, if, if you can't see the runway here and you would see it then on your left, uh, sorry, on your, uh, on your right somewhere, kind of, uh, then, then you have to go around. Otherwise you continue heading 340 to that, uh, to that point here. And then you kind of visually align yourself with the runway and you land. So it is quite a challenging approach. And even there, if, if for some reason you lose uh, eyesight to the to the runway, you have to go th this way. So this is another missed approach uh, go around procedure. So if you, if you need to go around, you just fly again 274 and you intercept the KLP. So this is an example for really uh, for a non-precision a uh, complicated approach where you you have to have all your radios set up properly and you need to be aware of the radials and you're intercepting radials so this is actually quite a challenge and uh, i think there's a video out there from black box uh, 711 if i remember correctly uh, i think he's doing this uh, this approach here um, i might look around for the video okay so that's basically it um where is it here so Here's all the countries, Albania, Armenia, Armenia is also like more to the east than Azerbaijan, Belgium, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia. So basically all, all European countries plus a bit more available to you, um, including the Ukraine, um, available to you to pick and uh, get charts. Yeah, that's about it. I hope that was useful to you. Until next time.